Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's Robin from Triple H Games, and uh, we're back live doing the next session of The Sky Is No Limit. Uh, before we go into our recap, I just wanted to do a shameless plug. This is Leagues of Adventure. You can get it uh, from uh, Drive Through RPG, and um, there's going to be a link down in the description, which you can uh, click on to go to get the PDF. There's a softback version, there's a hardback version. So um, if you like this game, that's where you can get it from today. Uh, also in the, the description, if you're interested in our Ubiquity dice, there's uh, two flavors that we have currently, which is uh, these Mythos ones, and also these Fleur de Lis All for One dice. So again, in the description for this my video you'll see a link to where you can get those also um, so please help us out and uh, jump over to those sites and, and uh, uh, dip into your pockets if you can and i'm going to hand over to eli who's playing george mallory and he's going to give us a quick recap on the previous session which was pretty pretty epic if i remember rightly so over to you eli thank you thanks Okay, so um, in the last session, we had uh, arrived at the coast of Belém in Brazil uh, in our quest to find a plateau with the dinosaurs, right? On our airship, the uh, Epiphany. Um, we had landed and encountered uh, some of the, uh, some native tribesmen you know, disguised as lizards who tried to attack our ship. And we had diffused that situation and were in the process of investigating um, these uh, people, right? What, what knowledge they had of the dinosaurs and what knowledge we could extract when we were interrupted by the arrival of uh, British troops at this area, led by uh, Lieutenant uh, Belvedere, no, uh, <laughs> His name is Brewster, but I'm not supposed to remember his name, so I didn't. Uh, uh, so if you listen to me calling him by different names, now you know why. But his last name is Cadenza. And he came with a troop of soldiers to investigate. Uh, they boarded the ship um, and asked about uh, John St. John Smythe. Uh, one of the uh, representatives of the Royal Geographical Society who had been stricken by a poison dart by the uh, lizard uh, people, if we can call it that. Um, we took him to sea. We tried to explain that we had been ambushed by these uh, tribesmen clad in, in, in the guise of reptiles. Uh, he was skeptical, did not believe us. Uh, uh, when he saw... Uh, uh, St. John Smythe's condition, you know, he grew agitated and had us march down to the beach. We tried to convince him that we might be surrounded by these uh, tribesmen, even as, you know, as we spoke. So we, we managed to convince him and we went down to ramp. Uh, that is, Oscar and George uh, managed to convince him and led him down to the beach with the troops while uh, Lawrence Garibaldi uh, stayed behind uh, trying to brew more of the antidote to the poison in an effort to help uh, St. John Smythe and figuring it would be useful, you know, if we are to proceed further into the jungle, we'll probably be in serious need of antidote at some point. So he started, he stayed behind at the engine room, which also doubles as his laboratory, uh, concocting this antidote. Uh, however, during this process, while we're trying to convince uh, Brewster, uh, the lady uh, tribesman who we had, or the tribeswoman who, had, who we had captured, managed to escape her bonds and make her way to the top of the ship. And she started attacking the ship itself, much as you know her fellow uh, tribesmen had done before. Uh, while emit emitting these uh, uh, ulul ululating cries. Um, so everybody's attention was immediately drawn to the top of the ship where we could see this figure trying to stab the ship to death. 
Uh, and unfortunately for us, that cry was answered in the distance as the gigantic figure of a pteranodon uh, appeared in the sky, uh, reaching the ship. Um, it's, it, it landed on, on the deck of the ship, uh, rocking the ship severely and started trying to bite into the ship as well, uh, causing it to tilt from side to side. This uh, in turn resulted in Garibaldi being uh, uh, thrown about the ship, uh, knocking him unconscious. Uh, at this point, uh, both George, my character, and Oscar, uh, Robin's character, rushed up the, the ramp, you know, uh, yelling at Brewster to fire on the, on the, on the dinosaur, right? While we rushed uh, up the ramp back onto the deck of the ship to try to to scare this monster away. Uh, and so, uh, as the ship rocked, the, the electrocarbolic acid batteries that power the ship uh, sustained damage from all this, you know, uh, commotion and uh, uh, power began arcing throughout the, uh, the engine room. Um, as uh, George reached the beast, uh, he tried to draw its attention and, and succeeded, uh, uh, which well. was not so good, uh, such a good idea. And it started to attack me. I managed to evade as uh, Oscar made his way to the ship's crane at the, at the front of the ship, right? Um, uh, at this point, uh, uh, I managed to lure, moving towards the, the side of the ship, nearest to the water, right, o which it was over the, 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 the water itself, I managed to draw its attention. And at one point when the beast tried to attack me, I dove off the, the ship. This coincided with uh, uh, Lawrence's waking up in the engine room and realizing that the power generators were going to explode, right? Because the, the, the power was out of control. And so he decided to discharge all the energy from the, the, the batteries so as not to, to cause an explosion. So this had uh, the effect of electrifying the, the deck of the ship, uh, which in turn caused the tribeswoman to collapse, uh, injured the uh, pteranodon to a degree. Uh, and at this point, Oscar swung the crane and managed to latch onto the pteranodon's wing uh, injuring the membrane and, and the beast, right? And the beast tried to fly off, but still hooked to the crane, which caused the ship to tilt uh, markedly, uh, knocking everybody about. Uh, I believe, I can't remember, but I think Oscar sustained damage from the uh, electricity as well. And the last thing we saw was uh, John St. John Smythe's body come flying out the window <laughs> when the ship tilted hopefully to land on the water uh, and seemingly dying once again. He's had a hell of a time. Is by now. He's his, had a hell of a time. <laughs> by now it's his custom, right? He dies at the end of every episode. So uh, we'll see what foreign happens. foreign service was easy. <laughs> no, no, indeed. And I think that's pretty much where we left it. It is exactly <laughs> where we left it. The last, the last image is of... Sinjin Smythe's body hurtling through space toward the ocean. But quick quiz for our resident chemical expert and uh, Oscar, our resident inventor. When electrical current from the carbolic acid electrofluidic agitation power generation batteries is applied to the anti-gravitic paint of the hull, what is the effect? Yeah. Well, it's um, energized. It's it's energized, energy, so yeah. Of course, only one and place when it is energized, go. it then moves in which direction? It Away goes, from Earth. It forces, it's, it's a, it, it, it goes against gravity. So, yes. We're going to... No. No. <laughs> yeah. Well then. I think, <laughs> I think we're going to be going up. Skywards. <laughs> and let's see, well, I've applied, applied you know, 72 gigajoules of electricity to the paint, which had the uh, square root of, oh, oh my. <laughs> so, so, as, 
As we fade in, we are in the engine compartment, which is just a nimbus of energy. The, the green glow of, of the fluid inside the glass battery chambers lights the floor, but the blue discharge of the electricity is arcing across the ceiling beams and the support struts. And, you know, we've got alpha on the floor and, and beta clinging to a post and we've got uh, gamma sliding down, you know, and they're all being, being struck by random bolts of electricity, but they're having a conversation at the same time in the background, which is slowly starting to penetrate through Lawrence's fog of injury and pain and exhaustion. And it's, it's something along the lines of in their scratchy, you know, searching random access of wax cylinder voices, you know, it's like, well, it's not ideal, but <laughs> perhaps they know what they're doing. <laughs> Um, can I just I know what I'm doing? Can I just uh, can I, I I forgot to say I decided that I'm going to spend my 15 XP. Oh, I see. Well, I wanted to buy the Jack of All Trades talent. Oh, nice. Uh -huh. Is that uh, is that okay? Go for it. Cool. Adding to my character sheet as we speak. Okay. So I guess we can we can model this in the fiction as the adventure, the excitement, the stimulation, the camaraderie, kind of rousing Oscar out of a a long lived melancholic funk. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Definitely, yeah, like that. <laughs> All right. So outside, Sinjin Smythe crashes through. The, the shattered glass of the porthole to plummet toward the gentle lapping waves of the of the Atlantic Ocean against the coast near Belim. On the beach, we have, you know, the, the, the big game hunter, the scattered, morale broken local British troops who are desperate for something even remotely resembling leadership and finding no trace of it whatsoever in Lieutenant Arm Brewster <laughs> Credenza. <laughs> That's not his name. I'm sure it's Crescendo. <laughs> <laughs> and he's randomly shouting orders, which are doing nothing but confusing his troops. He's ordering them forward, but also to fall back. He's ordering them to form up on him, but also to scatter and take cover while maintaining fire and they just simply don't know what to do. But maybe one or more of them is contemplating firing on him. In the water, after a splendid dive off the, the back rail of the stern prior to its destruction, yes. <laughs> the, the fierce attack of the Pteranodon creature, uh, far larger, whoops, far larger than these. Mm -hmm. Just if you get a, a look at the scale, far larger than these. We have George Mallory in the salty brine of the sea. Overhead, the shadow of the ship is spreading as it comes closer and closer and closer to the water, discharging electricity all the while. The pteranodon is trying to, to get away. It's beating its massive wings, but it's still captured by the crane until the point where the epiphany goes perpendicular to its normal bearing. Right? The deck is almost 90 degrees straight up and down. Tanvir Singh, who was on the side of the ship, is now standing on top of the, the ship, you know, screaming in pain. His, his clothes have been seared. And uh, other troops, the stevedores and, and whatnot, in, in various parts of the ship are crying out, what's going on? And you hear uh, dishes clattering and <laughs> crystal breaking. Just imagine the chaos in the kitchen. Uh. <laughs> 
Jean Claude's gonna kill us. <laughs> French, yes. <from> Man, <laughs> <laughs> the crane mechanism lets go. Right, there's a, there's a massive detonation there, similar to the detonation on on the bridge, as the the power overcharge walks its way toward the stern and toward the bow. Different systems are exploding. So. The crane lets go, and so it begins to unspool as the, the pteranodon beats away. And the epiphany begins a rapid ascent, which, unless you are very athletically inclined, will drive you to grab onto something. Please roll. <clears throat> Um, well, I'm not athletically bent, so... Uh, but luck. you are a jack of all trades, right? So. Uh, jack of all trades, so uh, I'll grab hold of anything. Right, so a skill you don't have as a jack of all trades, providing it's not a specialized skill, will give you the opportunity to roll. So it'll be a dexterity roll. And they're, because they're, that's normally paired with that yeah. yeah. And that's a double, is that double dexterity? Or is it just? No, just. Right, just, just I think in this case it's strength, for, isn't it? For it's athletics? strength, yeah. yes, strength. Uh, not. For the price of a couple of uh, uh, style points, you can boost it up a little bit, but I, I think it only adds uh, yeah. uh, uh, an extra modifier for the rest of the scene, though. So it, it might come in handy. It's always a temptation with Jack of all trades to spend those two style because then it lasts the entire scene instead of a single roll. Uh, oh, come on, he's rolling two dice. Well, how could he possibly yeah. not? Yes, sorry, it's not dexterity, it's strength, isn't it? Yeah, so two dice. And uh, I've only got one style point. I think I'll save, I'll hang on to that. One success. Oh, the average. That'll do grab hold of a robot or something <laughs> oh so am i am i rolling athletics as well being crashed around yeah that makes sense doesn't it are, are, are you oh, are. are you even oh. awake <laughs> well no I, I am okay so i'm rolling okay i'm not rolling seven dice i'm rolling six dice because i'm a negative one so yeah that's fine i'll be fine so, yes exactly wow exactly my brain is feeling <laughs> And I've managed to roll zero successes. Ah. Oh, nice. zero. That's... I'll let you contemplate that, but I, I do have to check and see what all this nonsense is Rock outside. Is, my is, go ahead. <laughs> right, I understand. Okay, we'll take a shot. I'd, I'd like to let you know that, in fact, you know, triple A's games guys <laughs> are incredible. <laughs> is, listen, the chances of rolling zero successes on six dice is pretty small, but triple A's games dice have managed to do it. Which is not to say that other times they've that, rolled six successes on six dice. So, that's what so, makes them so extraordinary. <laughs> absolutely. absolutely. So, no more leagues of Gothic Horror dice, eh? Oh. Oh, uh, yeah. I, uh, there might well be, actually. I have to check yeah, that. The, the beautiful uh, old suckers on I think, I think those ones, uh, yes. Uh, I forgot about those. Uh, so, I'll have to go uh, search for those. All right. Yeah, that'd be a zero. But certainly we've got plenty of the uh, Mythos dice available. Mm. And, and all for one. They are beautiful. Ah, we're back. It was nothing. <laughs> tell it to the tell it to the judge. <laughs> zero successes. Zero oh. successes can be interpreted excitingly in ubiquity as a critical failure. Oh, well, it's critical, all right. <laughs> now, I want everyone to remember where we are in the engine room. And what is the most interesting feature of the engine room? Well, that would be the, uh, the electrocarbolic acid. Acid batteries? Thanks, thanks, Steve, thanks. Well, the, the, the flesh burning acid batteries. <laughs> I believe the word you're looking for is Possibly. caustic damage. Uh, that would be it. That would be it. Yes, the caustic damage. <laughs> so, Mort Garibaldi sliding across the floor. 
vainly reaching out, hoping not to die in a searing, acidic mess, has but one chance to survive. <laughs> Beta, who is gripping one of the stanchions holding up the ceiling, has the opportunity to grip you with his claw. However, the flaw of the automatons is slow. <laughs> so he gains his very first style point because his slowness is contributing to the peril of everyone involved. Yes, it is. So exciting. <laughs> My, my future is in the hands of a slow robot. Clockwork powered. Don't, don't, don't you know, the situation could always be worse. At least he's not one of the ones that has to wind himself up, right? So. <laughs> well, I'm slightly, slightly worried that he might fall foul of the caustic nature of the acid as well. I can, I can see like a scene from Terminator as he kind of dissolves it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for giving Anthony that idea. He reaches out to grab you. Too slow. Your body slams into the levitating glass batteries, sending them scattering like bowling pins shattering the glass against the bulkheads beyond, beyond you and above you, causing acid splashback, doing two caustic lethal wounds. Oh, it's got a Then Beta throws himself in the manner of these automatons to crash down next to you and say, cling to me, sir. Oh. <laughs> Just grab him, grab him weakly. He, he can muster, yeah. <laughs> and uh, this, oh, that's great. Am I, do I need to make a roll to remain conscious at this point? You do need to make a roll to remain conscious. Oh. And the success of your clinging, should you remain conscious, will determine if you are exposed to further peril. I understand this, sir. That's awesome. Okay. Negative. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. Remember, your injury does count on your consciousness roll. Okay, that's right. So, we got some negative three health. And my conscious roll is body? You got it. Okay, good. good. Let's see. Oh, good. Uh, so that's six dice, which is three dice. Anyway, Do you have any style, or did you spend it all oh, on some gone. frivolous thing? Yeah. I, think it's all gone. <laughs> I, I think the frivolous thing was trying to make the, uh, the, the get the, uh, the battery to work, or you know, discharge everything. And There's nothing directly. frivolous when it comes to style. Nothing. Nothing at all. <laughs> it's one. But you needed. <laughs> oh dear. The pain. Okay. So we will cut away to the ocean. Yes. Uh, where the wingtips of the pteranodon are, are hitting the waves as it's trying to, to break free from the cable that's on, on, on spooling or uncoiling as the epiphany is shooting upward and you know that the gangplank or the gangway breaks away from the side of the ship and comes raining down in pieces and you know some porter uh, an automaton uh, some hapless guy with some pillows goes tumbling off the off the deck Sinjin Smythe hits the water splash <laughs> water hard as steel from that height and of course, the, the firing never stops on, on the beach. We've got British troops firing into the trees. We've got them firing at the, at the Epiphany. They're firing at the, the Pteranodon. So, uh, 
realizing that, you know, whatever goes up will probably come down. Uh, uh, George starts swimming, you know, vigorously towards shore, hopefully catching sight of St. John Smythe. And, and, you know, if he's <laughs> not too much of a deviation of a course, right, try to swim toward him so I can grab him and bring him with me uh, to the shore. Because this is the All right. first guy I recognize, right? So, athletics. Athletics. And it will be difficulty too because you have to get there in time and then, mm -hmm. uh, and then transport his body safely. So we'll just kind of fold those two things into one. Okay. Into one would, role. Would survival be applicable as uh, for synergy? For synergy, yeah. In this totally. situation. All right. Excellent, excellent. So I am rolling eight dice, and uh, yeah, I think here we go. That is two, three, four, five successes out of eight dice. It's pretty good. That is very good. And so you and your, your cargo can, can make it safely to the beach well away from the ongoing fire. Now, of course, right, our big game hunter, right, Edmund Burke, different Edmund Burke, is now wading into the British troops, right? He's given up on, on firing on the Pteranodon, and he's wading into the British troops to, to gain control, to, to, to end the panic, to, to reorder them, and he's looking daggers uh, at <laughs> Uh, Armbruster Credenza, who is still, you know, screaming, uh, whatever thought comes into his into his mind. So. Oscar, you were on the deck. Yes, in the crane. Right, hanging on with yes. your one success. <laughs> yeah, as the keel of the Epiphany is taking on upward orientation. So it's beginning to uh, accelerate into its ascent, keel first, bottom first. Oh, oh crap. So there you are dangling, right, from the lever, <laughs> right, the forward and back lever of, of the crane out of the, the small uh, operators, uh, cupola, cupola. Well, this is definitely, this is definitely uh, um, hitting my floor as danger magnet. I mean, it can be <laughs> more dangerous than this. But it gets better. Oh, okay. Because the, the cable is going right past Oscar. And it's still connected to the Tyrannodon. <laughs> right. Which means that crane is going to get torn out pretty soon or the cable's going to snap or there's know. all kinds of horrible things that can happen <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you can't go down with three barrels not with three barrels exactly <laughs> is there a, um is there anything that i would with my engineering background think that i could do to save the ship to save the ship i mean is there maybe maybe i'll know of a way to discharge the the paint. Maybe there there's... Are, are several points where you could accomplish this from the bridge. And now the bridge has been renovated for easy access because the whole front of it has exploded. <laughs> yeah. Or engineering, a little harder to get to, but, you know, direct control over the problem. Okay. Well, I would probably assume at this point that getting to the bridge is going to be the quickest chance to yeah. save the situation. Okay, so I don't know how difficult it will be hanging upside down, <laughs> but I will hand, try. Hand over hand. Hand for, over hand. You know, about yeah. 10 meters. How bad is How hard can that be? It can't be that hard, surely. It can't be that hard. People do that all the time. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Let's begin. <laughs> I'm going to do that. <laughs> uh, an, an attempt to save the ship from okay. devastating situation. Fantastic. So this, once again, will default to just your strength. Okay, so um, seeing as 
I'm definitely in a dangerous situation. Can I gain a, a style point? I'm sorry you feel you have to ask. You can actually have two style points oh. because you're in such peril. Okay. And for the heroic rescue of John Sinjin Smythe, the local ambassador uh, attache uh, stationed in Belim, much to his own horror, and local representative of the Royal Cartographical Society. Uh, be a style point for that. Yes. Those nice. who have taken caustic damage are not conscious enough to know if they have style or not. I will not assign them just yet. All right. So, hand over hand. Okay, so I'm going to throw the two new style points. I think I had one style point left over from last session. So I'm going to include that as well. Uh, so that's a five, five dice. How high up are we now? You'll scare <laughs> Don't say something like that. <laughs> okay, here we go. Ooh, uh, two successes. Ah, okay. So you make a really good start. <laughs> Meaning, you get off of the crane okay. and are able to transfer yourself over to like the anchor assembly. Right. Remember, we had trouble with the anchor before, but the anchor assembly is still there. Okay, and are now you know, like looking for the the next possible handhold to get closer to the bridge. Yeah. When the crane rips away from the deck, the crane? bolts are shooting everywhere, and and, uh, and cables are snapping, and the you know the big drum that the, the wire cable wraps around goes slinging out toward the jungle and of course the, the British troops, the uh, big game hunters society guys all have to scatter out of the way of the, the raining debris, which is coming down from quite a height. Right. And we'll cut to George. My lovely crane. <laughs> because the pteranodon burned, shot, kind of wrapped up uh, partly in this cable, right? And now has this thing kind of falling down toward it from above, comes to ground on the beach. Oh. Within easy striking distance of the British troops, Lieutenant Armbruster Credenza, and of course, Edmund Burke. Mm. All right. Who bravely pushes his Batman out of danger. Out of the way. Yes. Yes. Uh, so, uh, you know, having dragged, uh, Sinjin Smythe at least onto shore, right? So yep. that he's, you know, face up and, and able to breathe on the sand and away from the water. Uh, <laughs> good, good idea. <laughs> uh, yeah. I start running towards the, uh, Pteranodon and British troops, um, you know, yelling at the top of my head, trying to... Uh, seize command of the situation, right? I start yelling out uh, uh, orders to, to I don't know, to flank the, ve the beast, right? To, you know, uh, fall into formation, uh, three squads, uh, uh, flank the beast uh, to distract its attention and coordinate fire and stuff like that, right? As I'm running right. my... Uh, Plan. Let's, that sounds like a plan. Uh, that, uh, uh, and, and beyond that is to at least get close enough to maybe grab a rifle and help. But uh, for now, seizing control of the situation is probably the best thing I can do. All right. So issue your orders with intimidation yes. and being able to come up with a, a workable plan to divide fire, mm -hmm. um, to possibly halt its forward movement. Uh, I think is worth uh, a, a plus two bonus for Ooh. preparation, a preparation bonus. Nice. So on top of that, I am going to use, uh, I think I'm going to use one style point, save a couple for a rainy day. 
So it's raining uh, now. It's raining now. Yeah. <laughs> it's raining acid. It's uh, carbolic acid. Yes. Uh, and if, if Oscar Oscar can't hold on, it's gonna be raining men. It's <laughs> cranes. It's it, it, as the British say, it's pissing down right now. Yeah. <laughs> so, but, but it's it's six dice though, so I think it's yeah. I think it's it's doable. Uh, okay. So let's. Come on, come on. That is three successes. The average. Okay. Still okay. <laughs> All right, so just, just to, to let you in, share a little bit of the process, we're, we're modulating their emotion. You're trying to seize control. They're used to responding to that, that sound of command, right? That, that tone mm -hmm. of leadership. But they are in a panic now. They, they don't know what's going on. Uh, but Burke has been able to calm them down a little bit from pure panic to, you know, to just confusion and disorientation. With your three successes, that, that helps you to move them up another level toward, toward organization. So the panic stops, they form up, but they're looking to you for orders while keeping an eye on the thing. So you've got a, you've got a clot of, of 12 men scattered across the beach, ranging from, from the tree line uh, to, the, to where the water is lapping up against, against the shore. So they're just in a, in a loose stream. But they've got arms at the ready, and uh, some of them will, of course, need to reload. Some of them won't. And, but uh, George is able to, to gain some control, and he earns himself a style point for doing so. We're going to cut back to Oscar. Oh, oh, before, before we cut back to Oscar, uh, it's, of course, uh, uh, George is yelling, Basil, get it together, man, uh, at... Uh, Cadenza. <laughs> of course. <That's> awesome. <laughs> of course. Uh, and I, at some point, I would like to lobby for Procter and Gamble to show up at the engine room looking for. Uh, All right. Uh, I well, like I like that um, just fine. And also, let's not forget Tanvir Singh. Tanvir, yes. Yes. All right. So. <laughs> well, well let's, Grover. Let's not maybe, forget Grover. Maybe not Grover. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Oscar Kisser. hanging upside down from from the large you know drum device that that controls the raising and lowering of the anchor. Uh, the next, the next most useful set of handholds is actually the central ducted fan housing unit. I don't know if you remember. Uh, the ship, but in the very center of the front deck, there is a like almost like a, a water wheel uh, a structure yeah. Yeah. for for fine forward and backward maneuvering. And so, navigating across that is is probably Oscar's best bet. Okay, let's uh, try and grab hold of something. All right. So to travel more distance. Uh, we are we're modeling this by being limited by your athletics. So okay. give it a try, sir. If you roll zero successes, you'll experience the sweet taste of gravity. <laughs> How many dice you roll in there? Two. Two? Oh, you only have a twenty-five percent chance of really falling to earth. Uh, do, do, do you have the two style to bump it up to the whole scene? Because whatever you do for I the rest it. of the scene. Spend it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Oh. God, this is it. It's down to this. <laughs> I like Oscar. He was a good character. One success. Yes. <laughs> I like. You don't, I like you don't make a lot of distance, you know, toward toward your goal, but you are making progress. And of course, dangling as you are, you can see that the ship is still going. <coughs> <coughs> and you no longer can distinguish who is who <coughs> on the couch. The only real thing that is clear is the tyrannosaurus <coughs> and it, it snaps its beak forward to ingest someone or something much the same way that, you know, a, a delicate crane would, you know, when wading through a, a, a peaceful river would snatch up a fish. Uh, of course, all around it, uh, there is chaos and raining bits of ship. 
Excuse me. And the chiming of bells. Now, in the engine compartment. Yes. It's time for the searing pain of acid to possibly rouse the unconscious Garibaldi. He is aware that some time has passed. He is cocooned in the cold metal embrace of an automaton. And distantly, deep inside its chest, it's playing a, a little lullaby, something like, hush, little baby, don't say a word. Um, Another body roll? Yes, indeed. Okay, so I'm still doing negative three. Negative three. And I like to point out that uh, the chances of rolling zero successes on six dice is 1.56%. So I am talented. You are indeed talented. <laughs> I would like to point out to the viewers at home, please do not judge the quality of Triple A's game's dice I, I by the, the uses to which they are put by the players in this campaign. Absolutely not. They are wonderful <laughs> dice. Oh, that's two successes. All oh, right, then. Goodness. Con consciousness searing, mind-gripping, oh. flesh-boiling consciousness returns. And you hear some, you know, distantly, uh, Beta saying something like, Sir, if possible, relocation is advised. And yes. still, you know, the, the, the ping, ping, ping of the, the metal music box kind of uh, lullaby is playing. Yes, yes, can you get me out of here? Certainly, sir. And he begins a slow and mechanical crawl, earning himself another style point as he continues to imperil you. You can see over his shoulder, not all of the glass cases have shattered because there were, there were backup devices. There, were, there was netting and, and whatnot, but many of them have shattered, many more than you might like. And there's, there's acid eating into the woodwork and, and that sort of stuff around around the room and filling the room now with toxic fumes. Gamma has gotten himself up and he's opened up the porthole and and Alpha is is turning on the fans and uh, to, to clear out the clear out the uh, the atmosphere. But uh, Delta is saying. Altitude is increasing at an alarming rate. What? Oh, damn it. He's saying this from the floor, and he's, you know, he can see like this dangling gauge with just dripping acid onto his chassis. And he's like, the altitude is increasing at an alarming rate. <laughs> damn it. Oh. Uh. Well, <clears throat> and it struggled to my feet and try to get to the emergency base releasing tank to let me right. neutralize the acid. And at that moment, face seared, <clears throat> hair curled, fez disrupted, <laughs> Tenvir Singh arrives. Ah. Oh. Who's going to be playing Tenvi? Oh, yeah. Tenvi? That's me. Uh, <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, yeah. With him is. I've forgotten which one's the cow. Gamble is with is with him, the stubborn one. Yeah. <laughs> Gamble is yelling behind him Proctor, get it together. We've got to find the professor. <laughs> He's on his own. We're all done for. <laughs> They're never right, around so how, <laughs> how and what are you going to do in this in this scene of great and acid dripping peril, Lawrence Garibaldi, thrill seeker? There's only the one thing to do. I have to have to discharge the uh, the emergency base tanks and, and spray the uh, spray the acid for that to neutralize it because we need to actually get the ship back down. Okay. Well, there's the safe way which will take you two turns of navigation through the, through the chaos. Wrong. Or 
there's the risky way, <laughs> which you could yeah. get there in a turn at great personal peril due to acid and other sharp broken things. <clears throat> but as a thrill seeker, you'd be entitled to claim two shiny style points. <laughs> oh, well, of course we're going that way. <laughs> well, all right then. <laughs> Come on, we're doomed if we don't get this open. Neutralize this acid. We've got to get the ship back down. All right, so try your athleticism. <clears throat> all right. Oh. Brave adventurer. Yeah, now, of on. course, gamble. I got to tell you, this violates all the safety protocols. It's like leaping into a burning lion's burning mouth. <laughs> the road to navigating to the giant off switch that he's pointing, right, to release the, the, the base. It might as well be lit with, you know, heavenly, holy light. Go this way. But he's going down the primrose path to hell if primroses were searing acid. <laughs> Mm. So, Mr. Garibaldi, what are you trying to do? Save the damn ship! Well, careful, there's acid on the way! Uh, uh, turn left! Turn left! <laughs> and so I'll try to direct him, and I'll, why not? I'll brush in to his aid. All right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to synergize with my, my uh, acrobatics, if that's possible. It's totally possible, that's why we take acrobatics. That's damn right. That's damn right. All right, and do I want to, that's six dice, do I want to roll, do I want to use style? Yes, yes, because this has to be done. Of course, it's also used for mitigating damage. Hmm. Yes, have some. <laughs> of course. I would be remiss in not pointing out that the trigger release for the base tanks is visible and is simply you just have to push it it's designed for quick release oh damn it never mind i'm not going doing that but it's a small target the size <coughs> of a head oh. well yeah i could throw something at it for a special effect to release the base yes that's exactly right I can do that. I don't know. Yeah, okay. Hey, Adam, you should be, uh, Ivan, you should be able to handle that, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Wrong base kind master. of base, but yeah. <laughs> minus, minus four oh, dice. Oh. <laughs> minus four dice. Okay. So we're, we're working on minus seven? Uh, yeah. Six or seven, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Right, well, let's let's say that's 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 I guess here for a second. Let's do the math for the kids at home. So my throw is actually ten. Well, so, so I'm taking away three because I'm at negative three. I'm taking away another four. Yep. So I got three dice left. Oh. Here's my two style points. So I'm gonna roll five dice. Yes. I'll try to hit this damn thing. So I'm <clears> grabbing uh, grabbing one of the, the pieces of debris. No, actually I'm grabbing my um. Uh, yeah, grabbing, grabbing this, this, uh, it's probably the teapot. Yeah, it's probably the teapot. Which, <laughs> which, which, which has been left there. The, the metal teapot. But, the yeah, metal teapot. somehow has rebounded all over the room and still. More than enough, more yeah. than enough mass. <laughs> the one with the leather yeah. bottom to keep it, keep it, uh, keep it steady as the ship lurches back. <laughs> yeah. It's like, cost quite a bit. By it's the way. probably cast yeah. iron. Cast iron teapots. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly right. They have it, have it set, yeah. Sorry, I'm going to roll these five guys. It's our only chance. So I only had hate. one for the teapot. <laughs> Add one for the teapot quickly. <laughs> Which was zero, but anyhow, I, that was, that's I actually got four successes. <clears throat> nice. Nicely done. Toss it towards the button, and of course the base comes out with incredible velocity. <laughs> comes out with spraying everywhere. A lot of the places are not the right places, but eventually it will fill up and, and get to where it has to go. All right. But can I 
Yes. And I yelled at the fellows, back up, this is just as caustic. They neutralize each other. <clears throat> also, there's going to be, for no real reason at all, other than genre, a massive discharge. <laughs> One last blast. Outside on the deck, Oscar, there you are dangling, right? <clears throat> yes. Yes, there you are. Yes. And of course, you're hanging onto a mostly metallic structure. Uh, yes. <laughs> Ouch. Athletics. I have none. Let's see <laughs> if you can make it to a non-metallic structure. Closer to the bridge, or not. <laughs> okay. Now imagine you start to feel the tingling as the charge, the discharge gets it's worse and worse. <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> One success. Yes. All right. These dice have been that's, very kind to me today. They, they are, although the Game Master is not, because that's... That's an amount of <laughs> what you needed. <laughs> Down in the engineering hold as the, the final discharge builds and everyone can see it happening. Delta, who had so helpfully pointed out the, the altitude problem, heaves himself up and puts himself between the blast and Mr. Garibaldi. And he's hit by a massive discharge of electricity, which shatters his glass eyes. And the last thing you hear him say is, I liked you, but he never finishes the sentence. Oh. And then there's that feeling in your stomach. One, sadness, but two, falling. <laughs> to gain control. <laughs> and Beta says, I'm not sure this entirely solved our problem. <laughs> One step at a time, Beta. <laughs> <clears throat> so I take it we're just now falling upside down. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> falling upside down. Our situation has not improved. <laughs> <laughs> On the beach, the Pterodon attacks, targeting Lieutenant Armbruster Credenza. Oh, no. <clears throat> Brewster. You must save him. Buford. <laughs> <laughs> but, I br but I brought you an offering of the Sinjin Smythe. He doesn't even move. <laughs> A burnt offering, nonetheless. <laughs> So, can I try and run and tackle uh, Buford out of it's, the way of the... It's totally, totally open for however yeah. you'd like to approach it. Appropriating a weapon, screaming orders, mm -hmm. tackling, what's his name? Uh, but if there's a rifle, I think I'd want to at least shoot the thing once because it's like... <laughs> You know, there, it did eat a, a soldier in the previous previously, so there, there must be its rifle, his rifle lying around. There so I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick up the rifle and I'm gonna aim and see if I can shoot at the beast's eye, figuring it might be a soft spot, right? Oh, so you're going for specifically the eye, or are we talking about vital area? Uh, maybe vital area i'll try to incapacitate right. it if i can so, yeah so right now we'll leave it we'll leave a little vague what the vital area is all right okay which uh what is your firearms pool uh hang on well my firearm skill is five but it, it all depends on you know plus whatever the weapon gives me three. Oh, that's pretty cool uh, so let's have three dice here. So that would be eight. Yes. So that would be eight. But since maybe uh, 
this sounds like an important role. I could put a couple of style on it, right? Because I'm running and I'm grabbing the, the rifle and sort of skidding to a stop uh, in the sand, right? And then taking aim and... Well, hang on to those styles just for a second. If you uh -oh. spent them, what would that raise your pool to? If I do, I think it goes to two, four, six, eight, and two would be ten dice. Well, Never as you five, slide ten. to a stop very close to it, mm -hmm. it gives you the sense that it doesn't have any vital areas. Oh. Uh, in game speak, your pool will be really reduced to below zero. Oh, no. Oh, no. oh yes. Uh, Good thing you're close to it. Yeah, well, yeah. <clears throat> uh, so. and getting so close to it, I'll give you a stop. Okay. Because uh, so you're overconfident. How bad could it be? Exactly. That's. I mean, I'm just going <laughs> to shoot it, and it's going to be fine. So uh, it's going to be fine. You might need to rename your delta at this point. Yeah. So I'll just try and shoot. <laughs> at its eye then or is that like also ridiculously oh uh, that's minus eight dice oh geez nah don't don't worry let's just give it a good shot and see what happens all right what ha we'll see what happens put some style into it here we go come on man this is the most dice i've rolled yet <laughs> so two four six Six successes. That's not bad. That's not bad. Yeah. All right. So you open up the, the gun, you know, kicks with feeling. And uh, you punch a hole through its, its leathery wing. You can smell the creature now, right? A, a peculiar, heavy, stinging, acrid reptilian, but also vaguely bird-like scent. And, you know, distantly you can hear other people opening fire as well. Mm -hmm. Whether they hit it or not, it's impossible to see because the, the, the creature is just so large. And it rears back up and, and flares its full wingspan, sparing Lieutenant Credenza, right? <laughs> who's you know, who's who's standing with not bravely at all. He's just kind of you know cover covering up, uh, not not uh, man enough to to look the end in the face. And uh, and the the beast once again looks like it's going to flap to to regain airborne, but it's still wrapped up in the cable. But all this draws people's eyes up, and the epiphany <laughs> seems to be getting larger. Uh, well, with a little bit of luck, at least if everybody dies, the epiphany will crush the pteranodon as it comes down. So <laughs> that's the best case scenario at this point, uh, which is not very right. good. But <laughs> Oscar reaches the bridge. Okay. Now it's it's devastated, right? You know the the, the map table is is uh, on fire. The, the captain's wheel, the whole top quarter of it has been blown out. The windows have all been blown out, but the, the signaling device for the, the speed of the engines, uh, it's still there. The tubes for yelling down to the engine room, they're still there. And the, the basic engineering controls, uh, the automated controls are still there. Whether or not they're connected, that remains to be seen. <coughs> Okay, All right. Uh, now, as a as a danger magnet, I'm going to give you two more style because that was that was pretty horrifying for a guy who spends most of his days in the lab. Yeah, generally speaking. I mean, that's possibly the worst thing that could have happened to him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, I'm going to start uh, trying to um, control the the pace of of the the, the sort of ship the climb. And at the same time, trying to roll it back so that the keel is properly aligned, 
So that's, right. that's my plan. Uh, so you're trying to write the ship? Is yes. What you're doing? Yes. Go for it. Yeah. Write the ship and slow its pace. That's my plan. Maybe okay. try and glide it so it's not falling directly down, but kind of slow the, uh, the, the ascent by kind of pushing it forward a little bit as well. That would be all right. That could work. So this is definitely going to be an application of your, of your weird science abilities <laughs> because nothing that would normally control the ship is, is really in a functional position. Everything's shattered, broken, dangling, right? Yeah. And Oscar needs to be able to figure out how he can fake it. Okay. Um, <clears throat> what are you doing? <laughs> it's, it's like the, the leagues of adventure just kidnapped Ivan. <laughs> well, let, I just let me I was thinking to myself. Well, that, that was a precursor to what I was going to say, just as an aside. Is let's imagine that this is the keel of the ship. <laughs> this is top. And let's just say this is like engineering, for example. And these little dice here are people. Well, <laughs> that's, that's kind of what that's happens. Basically but, but, what, yeah. Yeah, that's basically probably, 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 probably what happens. But it's okay. Because I still have, you know, I, only, I have two, a two, you know, well, two non-lethal wounds would kill me. But it's okay. Good. Let's go. It's okay. It's all good. Uh, okay. Uh, so uh, I will uh, <coughs> apply my science of engineering, which is a, a eight dice. Uh, I'm going to throw in one of those. I'm going to keep one style point for later. <laughs> so I'm uh, busy yeah, re rewiring the panel. And, I yeah. believe you can fly. I believe you can touch the sky. Okay. Uh, so nine dice rolled, four successes. Not bad. It's below average, but you know, it's yeah. stressful. Yeah, I just had a very frightening experience. My hands are shaking. <laughs> you getting shocks. Okay, so which would you like to happen first? The slowing of the descent or the riding of the ship? I think the slowing of the descent. That would oh, buy, brilliant. buy a bit more time. All right. And the methodology for that was to like send it off. Coasting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Okay. Perhaps, perhaps uh, also uh, figuring a, a quick way to to put a small amount of charge back into the paint. <laughs> <laughs> How bad could that be? All right. So you, you got a quick choice. You got to make it. Like yeah. that. Okay. Into the trees, down the beach, into the water. Into the trees. Okay. <laughs> All right. So on the beach, looking up, the, the pteranodon is beating, is trying to get uh, some some elevation. The, the ship has been growing larger. It's falling, and you realize that you're looking at the top deck as the ship is upside down. And uh, that, that bully, that stevedore guy that Oscar brought in that day, right? He's hanging on for dear life to, to the <laughs> railing, cursing a blue streak. And uh, out the, the shattered window of, of the galley, it's just raining all kinds of pots and pans and, and spoons and, and the like. And... Like very very distantly, distantly, like a, a, there's a reedy sound of like you know, man, oh, it's like a blood, you know, coming coming down. It's just getting louder and louder and louder. It's just getting closer, and suddenly it starts to not exactly level off, but it starts to curve, and it looks like it's going to go inland, still upside down. Right? Uh, no sign of the electrical discharges of before, uh, which may or may not be a good thing. Also, clinging on to the bulkhead door around where engineering should be, maybe, possibly, you spot the figure of your friend Tanvir saying clinging on for dear life. <laughs> right. Edmund Burke 
is, is using uh, his huge elephant gun, you know, more as a, as a quarter staff, because there, there isn't time to, to reload it. And, uh, you, sir, what would you like to do, George Mallory, explorer? <laughs> so the thing is coming down, what, what does the Pteranodon see? Like is the the pteranodon's head is head is down as it's trying to generate to, enough yeah, lift to, to yeah. lift. But so it's not looking up, so it doesn't right. see the thing. Uh, <laughs> is there a way I could I could sort of lead the thing towards the path of the ship? Ah, no, that's not a good idea. I'd kill everybody on board. Oh. Uh, Oh, I can always make more friends. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to th think it's still attached to the cable. And the, uh, the cable is, is, you know, impacted deeply into the, the beach, or the crane is impacted deeply into the beach. Right, right. So there's, you know, it's, it's not like I could release the cable to let it go, but uh, we got a specimen. We got a what? It's a specimen. A specimen. Yes, that's true. We can't release the cable. <laughs> it took me a lot to capture that. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out how <laughs> we can. Uh, you think about it. I'm going to cut back to the. Yeah, because I don't know. Yeah. It's all right. So, you know, just sandy beach, jungle tree line, ocean, and you're no longer going to be hit by the epiphany. Uh, it's going to impact in the tree line, and the creature is, is, is huge. Right? And it's having, it's having real trouble getting airborne from a standing start. Mm -hmm. In the engine room, what's going on? Oh, well... As the base, the base and the acid have neutralized, you know, at this point, I'm going in because what I really need to do is at least connect a couple of the batteries and then they bring them up to charge so we can, can levitate. So that's, that's basically the thing I'm just shouting to, to the, all of the, all the automatons, including the dead Delta, or the, well, incapacitated, you know, uh, truly dead. And, uh, and uh, Gamble and Will Chandler seem to be holding on for dear life. Just, we've, we've got the... We've got to plug this one wire in, the cable. We've got to connect the cable, and then the batteries will work. Tan Tanvir steps up at this point. I think I, I can reach that cable. Well, I think I can reach the other one. We'll work together in this. And so Gamble goes for the other cable. Just connect the big uh, ends. You have, to twi you have to put them in together and twist. I, I can just, ooh, I just reach it, I think. I hope they can. Yes. Yeah. I hope they can. So, then, uh, their assistants will apply a plus two bonus Excellent. to Lawrence Garibaldi. All right. You need to plug all these cables at once. Enough. The more back. successes, the better. That's good. That's good. Can I can I lobby for using athletics rather than chemistry, seeing as this is simply a physical act? Or yes, you, you can. can. Yes, you okay. can. We're basically well, taking the, the chemistry part on the auto. You know how how all of this this goes together. Yeah. Of course right. I do. Now, uh, just just to let you know, you're going to be spending successes basically. Right, the more successes you get will, will define the higher quality success. So a perfect success, something that was perfectly successful, would mean that your two assistants would be able to complete this without injury. Like and a perfect success, a perfect success would also, or not also, but could also mean enough energy to fly the ship rather than, you know, like safely crash land the ship, but enough to fly the ship. Mm. But you're probably going to have to trade off some successes toward preventing injury and some successes toward ensuring enough energy. 
Just so you know. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. We're rolling six dice. The decision is in your future. Six dice. Yeah. Yeah. Seven minus three. That includes three plus the two from your assistants? <clears throat> that's, that's correct. That's seven minus three plus two. Okay. No, that's the signal my, my rolling dice. Right? That's four. And I can tell you, I can tell you right now, my assistants contributed none of that. <laughs> that's too all for one dice I use. They're, they're just bumbling. Anyhow. All right. So that gives you two different effects that you can buy. Right. So you'd have enough energy to not crash although you will still impact. And you could prevent, under the normal ubiquity rules, you could prevent one wound. You could get more energy, or you could prevent more wounds and get no energy. What would you like to do? Oh, I'm splitting her down the middle, I believe. All right, you're a kind soul. As the epiphany from George's point of view, right, starts the, the lowest part of its arc, two things may or may not happen. But one thing that definitely does happen is that uh, there is a, a flare of, of mild electrical energy down the hull, and you can visibly see the effect of, of, of that slowing down. It's, of its fall, almost like it had become a feather. But its orientation remains in the hands of Oscar and his <laughs> engineering. Okay. Right, so I'm now going to pull a few levers, wind a, an energy thing to push some circuits closed, and uh, make a roll. Two, four, six, seven, eight. So, <clears throat> eight <laughs> dice, eight dice, one success. <laughs> <laughs> Kid you not, look at that. Wow. <laughs> Just, uh -oh. We use dice, there that's the whole point. <laughs> so, I would like you to think about the epiphany. From Oscar's perspective, is it the port side or the starboard side, which is his least favorite? <laughs> which one is pointing down, I guess, as much as uh, yes. <laughs> port, port side, I think. Port side, okay. Yeah. So the epiphany impacts the top of the tree line, shattering branches, breaking tree trunks, and then comes to uh, an impact with the you know the soft earth of the of the jungle floor, the rainforest floor, on its port side, you know, crumpling railings and who knows what other kinds of damage before painfully limpingly reasserting its anti-gravitic stance and hovering about one meter off of its own impact crater. <laughs> Way back in the trees, you know. Maybe, you know, maybe half a kilometer or so, 500 meters. Still on the port side or, or is it writing itself? On, on the port side, yeah. It's oriented in that direction. There's trees all around it, you know. And, uh, yeah. All right. Which means, which means with, with impact comes the possibility of damage. Mm, yes, it does. Okay. So... Uh, let's keep it simple uh, because this is it's so much beyond simple athletics we will use defense ah excellent defense defense this is your full defense your body your dexterity that's excellent okay. that's six minus three I guess it is Do we roll for the MPs as well or I'm just taking the average Oh, it's, hor it's horrifying. Right. <laughs> well then, I, I guess at this point I'm also taking three away from that in my defense. So, 
That's three yeah. dice. Okay. Three dice is awesome. That is. Come on, buddy. On the floor. It's on the floor. It still counts. It was bouncing. <laughs> That's three successes. <laughs> Larry was Larry, on the concrete floor. This thing was dancing like a mother. <laughs> In the comments below, I'm very yeah. curious. In your local culture of play, all, anyone yes. who comes to watch this at any point in time, please yes. leave a comment about whether on the floor counts. Uh, only, <laughs> only when it's successful, right? It's, like, otherwise, it's, no, no, wait, it's, it's, uh, it fell down. I'm going to need to roll it again. <laughs> this, this, thing was, this thing was dancing while you guys were watching. I was like, okay, man, so, I, I, I was scared. I guess I have to roll as well because I'm on board. Yes, you're on you're on board ship, yeah. Okay, so I got five defense. I rolled three successes. Nicely nice. done. All right, so you guys are thrown around, uh, but none of the uh, none of the non-lethal damage uh, sticks. Right. So ears ring. There's there's anything that was still like connected to something else or on a shelf, right? The 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 wall of neatly organized engineering tools. You know, it just comes ripping away from the from the wall. And the tools go flying everywhere the, the and, teapot uh, however has managed to bounce and ricochet of the walls and landed right side up on the <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the still teapot. has some tea <laughs> remaining <laughs> exactly all right now on the beach the pteranodon yes. i figured out what i want to do so excellent start so this is happening as the as the epiphany is crashing yeah so george starts uh, yelling out orders uh, fighting retreat, uh, fall back by ranks, you know, in, in meaning that, you know, one rank shoots and the other falls back and then they turn around and Reload. shoot and then the other goes, right, you know, yeah. uh, and I'm gonna, to the tree line, because I'm thinking if we get under the canopy of the jungle, then the, the, the beast will be unable to, to see us, right, and we'll just wait for it to either die or go away, because we don't seem to be hurting it. So I'll grab uh, 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 Beauregard and uh, <laughs> help him help him run toward the, the tree line. Okay, you're a sweetheart. All right, let's try that uh, orders roll. Yeah. Uh, so my intimidation is three. Uh, Somebody's it's important, it's Some important that. Go ahead. Somebody's commented about the dice. Never. No. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, I'll, I'll put one style point in it because uh, you know I'm overconfident. So the, this is why I'm, I'm grabbing Beauregard because it'll be you know. That's right. Whatever that guy's name is. Yeah. And I have a total of two successes, and the style did nothing. But hey, two successes. Excellent. Good. All right, so there's an organized regrouping and and they're they're maintaining fire, and you can see that there are there are thin streams of of blood, right? Mm -hmm. um, but to to fight a creature of this size definitely requires uh, a heavier bore, something along the lines of what Burke was using, but its rate of fire was simply so slow, and the the chaos of of the battle. Um, and his, you know, his vantage point on the beach, and it was on the back of the epiphany, just the, the angles were wrong, the distance was wrong. Um, but uh, the, the creature is still very much uh, alive, far more damaged by its exposure to the, to the ener energy uh, release on the epiphany than, than from the volley of fire. It's still trying to, to gain flight, it can't, right? And I'd like a perception check from George. Is pretty good. Here we go. So um, when did when did Lawrence die then? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that would be a three successes on perception. Three successes. Okay. Um, as you are heading for the tree line carrying Lieutenant Arm Brewster Credenza, the man whose name is impossible to remember, <laughs> um, you have to pass underneath the, the creature's chest. Right? And it's, it's thrown its head up to the sky as the, as the epiphany um, 
releases another bolt, uh, discharge of energy again, right? And uh, it's, it, it screams its rage. And you know, the, 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 what's left of the crane is, is jerking across the beach, you know, shedding uh, bolts and, and, and bits of steel. And as you pass underneath it to get to the tree line, you see that it doesn't have a, a collar or a harness, but it has a piercing. A piercing? A, a piercing going, going through the, the flesh oh. at, the, at the base of the, of the neck where the, the collarbone or, or whatever would be in, inside the creature. So it's, it's quite long, it's like the size of a, of a man, right? Not a not large and, and not uh, dangerous for the creature's health or anything, but it it's uh -huh. definitely a, a, a human made object yeah. object uh, inserted safely through the flesh. Right, it's all healed up, and uh, Is it, and it glitters. It's like um, primarily uh, like like emerald. So this is this is like a a. A column. I can't think of the, the word that I want to blank on the word that I cylinder? want. But a cylinder. Thank you. A cylinder of emerald, the size of a man. Oh okay. My God. And it's studded with gold and other other gems in a, a more human sized proportion. That's quite a bit of bling. Mm -hmm. And what draws George's eye to it is that it's beginning to pulse. Hmm. Interesting, interesting. So, is right, it, so you make it to the tree line. It's finally able to tear itself free from from the, the confining weight of the crane and trailing the cable, right? And you know, one small piece of you know, block and tackle equipment from the end of the crane, it starts to make a, well, not a beeline, but it starts to make uh, a couple of powerful hops down the beach using all four of its legs and then finally is able to get up in the air, finally is able to rip through the, the cable and get full extension on its wings and then very heavily is laboring up into the air to arc out into the, the, the uh, over the top of the, the rainforest. Well then, to the ship. Let's see about uh, our crew members. And I'll try and, and find a way to, because it's hovering, so I'll try to see if there's something I can ha hang on to to climb. Uh, sure. On it's only 500. 500 meters, and in that time, uh, you're able to exert control over the troop. The men have have forsaken Lieutenant Credenza as their leader, mm -hmm. and they are looking to Burke and to Mallory for for orders and guidance. So I will instruct them to like look after the wounded and and uh, you know start collecting. I don't know, but start collecting ammo and stuff like that to, to keep the rest of the troops busy, right? While they see some see to the wounded and some. About 200 meters from the, from the impact zone, uh, you find a still mostly neatly pressed Grover <laughs> hanging from the remains of his umbrella <laughs> from a tree branch, just with a gentle sway. <laughs> Good old Grover. Meantime, Grover. meantime in the. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll have a small detachment of men help me along so that. I, right, and they're also bringing Sinjin Smythe along. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With you. So, uh, but what does Grover say? I just don't want to let this moment go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Robin, what would Grover Grover be saying? Uh, <laughs> Well, I don't think he'd be very happy about his umbrella. This umbrella I bought from uh, from uh, uh, the best street uh, tailors in London. Uh, it will it will cost me a month's wages to get it replaced. <laughs> a grumpy grower. Never seen that. Uh, 
Oof, Tim Moore must have been rattled. Don't worry Let about me. that, Grover. We'll, we'll get a new one. <laughs> meantime, meantime, in the engine room, I'm, like, I'm standing on the wall, I suppose, you know, staggering about a little bit and, and slapping Tambor Singh and, and, uh, and, and Tambor Johnson. Tambor Singh is in serious need of medical attention. Uh, Proctor and Gamble just have uh, some, some bruises and, and, uh, and the like. Uh, poor Proctor has a big shiner. Yeah. Uh, Good show, fellas, and and don't worry, we'll get we'll get dealt as right as rain. Don't you worry, there, Alpha. But Lawrence <laughs> is ready to to pass out. Right, he's just staggering on his on his feet. But the the words coming out of his mouth are unintelligible. His eyes keep keep rolling. If he's not hospitalized, he is in you know in danger of having a stroke or something he's he's uh, in such he's in such bad straits okay gamble, gamble tells him but uh, don't worry mr garibaldi we 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 seem to have landed i will find uh professor uh, uh weingold and he'll put you right as rain uh, right out of it. <laughs> right out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Proctor, job, don't, don't just stand there, grab Mr. Uh, Singh, and let's let's go. We'll need to find the professor. I think uh, Oscar would be, obviously, he's still in the, what's left of the uh, bridge. Uh, sort of, and, of course, the crew is, is starting to come and, and help yeah. out, right? They're, they're from wherever it was that they were you know, clinging for their lives to, uh, to prevent from, from being thrown around. So... The, the bridge crew is coming up and, and the, the engine room crew is showing up. And, and uh, I think uh, the, I'd like to try and uh, get the ship again. Try Now we've stopped moving. Maybe it'll be easier to get the ship sure. to be keel, keel, a, right keel. A, uh, yeah. A very, very useful first step. So slowly is, you know, with, uh, proper warnings and, and announcements and a countdown. You know the, the ship slowly rights itself, and uh, and people begin to pull together. Um, within thirty minutes of the ship being righted, uh, Jean Claude has uh, coffee, tea, and hot soups being being passed around, and uh, you know, and he is delivering much of it himself to the you know the the upper strata of crew of course he does it kind of like this like <laughs> flexing the whole time as he passes the tray you know, and offering his spoon you know but uh he uh um, very good not not complaining not <laughs> not <griping. I> <laughs> I thought I was Ivan was going to put the shirt on like an apron. <laughs> <laughs> thank, you, thank you, good boy. So you know, everywhere on on the ship is is devastated. It's going to take weeks to put things back together, um, and that's not including things like parts that you'll have to order, like like glass and gauges and and whatnot. Obviously, the ship still works. It can, uh, to some extent, be controlled, but it is no longer airworthy. It could no longer make the journey uh, that you've already made to get here to, to South America. It doesn't have the power. It doesn't have the ability to generate the altitude. And, of course, it doesn't have uh, enough uh, batteries in order for you to take them offline and, and manage them and then get them back on line again. So the ship is not dead, but it's dying. And it's not even yours. It's just a it's just a loner. <laughs> I'm sure they'll understand. Uh well this this causes all sorts of problems for uh returning a specimen. So what? Oh, don't worry, old, old well, chap. Uh, I mean, the, the the whole rush was really to get here. Maybe we could just take yeah, a, take a ship, normal ship. Yes, it's a it's a more concern with getting there. Uh, wait, 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 specimen? What happened out there? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, 
it's, uh, it's a bit of an exciting story, but uh, uh, let's not look at this as a setback on our expedition. I think this is an opportunity to perhaps even take advantage of. I mean, Professor, uh, how much of this, uh, uh, and, and Mr. Garibaldi, how much of this um, technology can we salvage? Uh, this large ship is ob obviously unsal unsalvageable at this state, but can we cobble together a couple of smaller boats? Uh -huh. Some of this technology, we could make river craft and, and approach our... Well, maybe... Alba holds up his claw. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mallory. Alpha. <laughs> <laughs> yes? There are life craft available, which are seaworthy, but at this time, not airworthy due to a failure in miniaturization for which I was blamed. <laughs> well, that's all right. We have uh, Professor Weingold. I'm sure he can cobble something together at least. Well, I would say that, 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 that didn't, didn't we say there was some spare paint, anti-gravity paint, and, it, and it we've got some batteries that are still functioning. Yeah, we could always... And it doesn't really have to fly, but maybe it could just speed us on our way through the river as a regular craft, just faster, right? We could, yeah, give it yeah. time. Give enough time. We, we could. the automata, do not wish to enter the great land of rust to <laughs> which you have brought us, but we would gladly labor to restore the physical structure of the epiphany oh, while you oh, are risking your lives for fame. <laughs> that sounds wonderful. Yes, good show, good show, Jeff. I, a specimen. Let's back up a little bit to a specimen. <laughs> so, so, yeah. What, 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 what exactly happened? <laughs> what specimen are you talking about here? Yeah, yeah. You see something? Did you not? Uh, did you not see okay. the the large flying dinosaur? The what? <laughs> and you let it get away? You recall well, the tattoo on one of our guests from before? Oh yes, the one that um, yeah, that, yeah It, it the, um, seems the creature depicted showed up <laughs> and is responsible for this. Well, how big? Big. Very big. <laughs> Larger than the epiphany. Uh, at at least, uh, Lawrence, you, sir, with your background in biology, even with your current wounded state, what are you sitting at as your rating? My rate of bi biology? Doctor? Yeah. That'd be four. Although I am at a negative three because I'm... <laughs> so still one die remaining? There's still one die remaining. Roll it for me. All right. You're not going to believe what the chances on this are, kids. You're not going to have to look at the table, but this is... 50-50. <laughs> <laughs> it's 50-50, whatever way you look at it. Should I just get a coin? No, I'm going to use a triple ace games die. And yes! <laughs> I get the elder sign. Yay. I know, I success. You are protected from harm. The size of creature that they are describing is so much more vast than the ah. fossilized <laughs> remains. It's a horrible creature! Oh my god! It's, it's, it's gigantic! It's it's gigantic. gigantic! Extreme close-up! Yes. I the, didn't, uh, didn't realize it was so furry. Sorry. Remains <laughs> located near uh, Berlin just a few years ago of this flying creature. right? They are nowhere near this size. Nowhere near this okay. size. So this is a discovery if you manage to make it and prove it uh, that would have you on the, the lecture circuit for the rest of your life. Sure, surely, oh, this was fantastic. surely the, get away. the photographer 
Miss Smith, I was uh, looking at her. Yeah, she Ms. she Smith. must have. She, I'm sure she must have snapped. Hopefully, <laughs> snapped a few pictures. Miss Smith was in the developing room at oh, the time no. that all of this happened, and has <laughs> lost all of her photographs from the journey so far. Oh. Well, we'll have Percy's written account, at least, of the voyage. <laughs> Sadly, Percy's typewriter <laughs> has been smashed beyond it's localized not. to repair. But somewhere yes, he still the, has all of his, his previously typewritten pages. It's now somewhere in the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. <laughs> That's right. Surely but someone... will be doing all of his notes by hand now. Surely someone's got some preliminary sketches of the, of the creature. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got, to, we've got to get a specimen. I mean, yeah. Jean Claude has made one in fondant. <laughs> <laughs> he has a marzipan epiphany and a fondant uh, pteranodon. Amazing work. Amazing work in this, this <laughs> tropical country. <laughs> how, how, does, how does that fondant not melt in this heat? <laughs> <laughs> That's the problem. Willpower. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, do you want to launch your expedition, leaving the crew behind to effect physical repairs on the ship? Well, I think the first thing I'd like to do is practice some medicine on uh, Mr. Garibaldi. Practice. It's an interesting word. <laughs> Practicing medicine until we get it right. Oh, you know, yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what could go wrong? Surely. And, you know, not, not talking about any experimental procedures. <laughs> so, uh, so two successes will alleviate a, a lethal wound transforming it into a non-lethal wound. Two successes will then heal a non-lethal wound. He's got a large mix of lethal and non-lethal wounds. And of course, he also has the, these caustic injuries, which are not distinguished from lethal wounds in terms of healing them. It's just on how, uh, <coughs> so how many they are to avoid. How many uh, wounds do we need to, 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 to get to, into a stable Situation. We're not going to tell you. Ah. You're just going to have to practice your medicine. Okay. Can anyone help Oscar practice medicine? Didn't George have? I believe I do have four skill in medicine, so I should be able to assist. All right. Well, it's the same as mine, so we're about no, the same. But, oh, okay. Well. But Oscar volunteered, so yes. he'll do the role, and he can have two extra assistance dice from George Mallory. The gay. Who's, who must be certain that everything will be all right. Of course. There we go, then. You, you, you better, better bite onto this old chap. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. His bedside manner is, this is going to hurt. <laughs> like this. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I don't know how to be this old boy. Uh, two successes. <laughs> Better than nothing. Yeah, yeah. So, so I think that, that converts one lethal to non-lethal. To non-lethal, yes. Yay! Fantastic. But not one of the classes, I suppose. So they're, they're just lethal wounds. They're not any There's, different okay. from any other lethal wounds. Okay, great. Oh, well, yeah. You probably got some of my plastic wounds to be a little bit nicer. Uh, yeah. Excellent. Right. So yes, you're you're horribly burned, right? So he has to debride the 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 melted sections oh. and and then wrap them up and, and uh, talcum powder and good, some good carbolic soap for good measure. Mm -hmm. Disinfect. Disinfect. Yeah. <laughs> Steep it in whiskey for a little while. Yeah, that's good. All right. That's good. So I'm still that's a, uh, I'm still at negative three, but I have six lethal and three non-lethal wounds now. That's good. So it's going to take a fair bit of time for Lawrence Garibaldi to heal naturally, um, and with proper medical care, it would still take 
quite a bit of time. But if you can somehow in a rainforest keep your bandages clean, how bad could it be? Uh, not bad. I'm not going to miss out on this. We'll probably have a couple of days while we get the uh, the expedition right. re. Well, we need to, and yeah, because we need to get yeah. We need to we need to think about how we're going to get through the jungle. We Oscar, how much of your stuff do you need to bring with you? Oh, well, I've got how much? I've got that massive crate that we have to take. Oh. <laughs> that's why. I, that's why I have uh, Procter and Gram uh, Pro oh, Procter and Gamble too. What are you gonna? What are you gonna fix? What are you gonna like repair or fix in the in the jungle? Well, who who knows? Well, we 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 do well, have. We, a... I I'll probably put up a lot of fight, to, but well, we'll eventually give in to the idea of being able well, to take my thinking, if, portable listen, uh, workshop with me. Well, I'm, you know, it's just a portable workshop, but we're gonna be in the jungle. I figure if, if the Procter and Gamble won't have to carry the crate, you know, I, I don't know how far I can walk. Oh, I see. Oh, ah. <laughs> I get Edmund you now. Burke knocks on the door. Enter. <laughs> he comes in and says, I know you gentlemen are, are busy, uh, but I wanted to show you something very curious and, and wonder if those of you who have uh, scientific grounding could fix it. Because my compass seems to be broken. Well, that's and he puts his, his very simple compass you know, on the table where it's doing lazy circles. Oh, nowhere is north. That's remarkable. That's uh, Hold on for a second. That's a strange a stone. Maybe we should check. I mean, the ship's bound to have a compass. Let's check the ship's compass. Well, the ship's, of course, is in a thousand pieces up on. Ah, there. okay. I'm gonna grab grab a lodestone and get it closer to his uh, closer to his compass and see if that does anything. It has the the intended expected effect. Somebody else must have a compass. So I'll, I'll but wait. If it's if it's stopping, if it's stopping and pointing at the lodestone now, it means it's, it's functioning. It's, it's doing magnetism is magnetism, old boy. But I take this away, and it spins. That shouldn't happen. Well, right. perhaps this is not related, but you, gentlemen, who are familiar with this technology and uh, and such. Uh, the uh, specimen, the large dinosaur, had a uh, man-made object in its neck. It seemed to be composed of precious stone, possibly emeralds, with uh, other precious stones embedded within it, uh, but it was curiously glowing and pulsing. Glowing and pulsing. I wanted and to ask. Yes. I wanted to ask the pulsing. Is that like? Uh, was it like a, a, an audible effect or, or a kind of a uh, just just visible? Visible light, just, just like a light. Blurred in and out. Okay. Yes, like an internal light. So I wonder, you know, is 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 this a device of some sort? Might it be interfering with the uh, compass? Or, I don't know if it's related, but I suppose that's up to you, gentlemen, to figure out. It's possible. Uh, I don't mean to bring more bad news other than the compass, says Burke. Uh, but I've been speaking to the boys. He's referring to the you know the the, the squad of of troopers. He says they uh, they want to take what's his name back for trial. <laughs> and uh, they would like me to go as a witness and and you as well um, they claim that there's a you know i mean they were speaking freely because we've been through that experience uh, they claim there's a bit of a of an old boys network uh, mm. at the embassy and they fear for uh, they fear for their treatment and that he'll just be reinstated because uh, he's here, uh, as you, you may well know, uh, as punishment rather than revoking his commission for uh, a terribly bad show as, a, as an officer. Um, so I, I, I don't think I want him representing uh, the Empire abroad. That, uh, that seems reasonable. 
Um, so that would mean going into Belim and speaking before the magistrate there. And uh, mm, well, I don't know if that's a risk you're willing to take given I the experience we had out at sea with the, uh, the Royal Geographic Society. We just don't have time for that. We just didn't. And you time. didn't come here. You didn't come here to go to a courthouse. You came here to, to hunt big game. We're going to have to take him with us. Well, to be honest, I thought I could get big game with my big gun, but my big gun is both too slow and too small for the game that that I want to hunt now. So what you're saying is that you're quitting? No. I need to improve my equipment, and I can't do that in the jungle, so I was thinking the most sensible place would be to go to the, the nearest City. form of civilization. I mean, it's not like we're we're stranded out here with a with a weaponsmith or anything. Well, here's here's my my idea. I think uh, since we do have some uh, smaller craft, uh, and uh, Lawrence seems in no condition to travel at present, uh, it might be worth taking some time to reconfigure those boats. Uh, restock, perhaps from you know salvage what we can from the Epiphany that that we can take, uh, and and whatever else we need we could grab from Belem. Uh, perhaps uh, Oscar can uh, use the technology to improve our, the speed of the boats uh, so that we can make up for lost time once we get underway. And it, it won't matter how fast we get there, old boy if it can just swallow us whole exactly exactly so we need armaments yes that that's what i'm saying if we could go to belem and restock and give uh, oscar some time to perhaps improve our mode of transportation perhaps he can improve our weapons as well what weapons we have but uh i mean in any case i don't see how a few days might cause uh, uh, significant uh, derailment of our plans. I mean, we did get here. We did establish a, a traveling record by air. Uh, it's just the second leg of our journey, which is uh, postponed. It is a risk uh, because, as you say, we do have enemies uh, uh, from the uh, Royal Geographic Society, but. Uh, well, we I do know. need to return Sinjin Smythe to the embassy. There is that uh, as well. He's in a terrible state. Uh, but just between us, the men have stated that if, if we will not stand with them before the magistrate, then they would rather walk with us into the gates of hell than go back themselves. So I think they might be persuaded to join us uh, on this Excellent. mission, and an armed cadre of formerly good soldiers may be what we need. In terms of uh, in terms of his his um, his gun, what what is he looking to uh, achieve with uh, improvement? Is there he is there something I can do? He yes, it's certainly something that you could modify uh, as. Uh, by using weird science, you can enhance the natural or normal characteristics of an existing weapon, either by uh, the easiest way would be the ammunition. You'd give it more powerful ammunition. <laughs> but uh, uh, so that's certainly within the realm of possibility. There would be a limit on the amount of ammunition that could be created. Um, so he knows he hit it, but he also knows that he didn't kill it. And he's using the most, you know, the most powerful handheld weapon of the age. What about um, some kind of poison that we could put in the ammunition? To be honest, sir, what I noticed is that creature was terrified and horribly or horribly injured by the lightning. So if you can ah. give me the power of Zeus in my hand. Electrocarbolic, well, electrocarbolic ammunition will go a long way. Gentlemen, <laughs> electric 
harpoon. An electric harpoon. And, 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 and yeah, the guy only puts up his sketchbook. Electric uh. harpoon. We make a harpoon. We can attach it by a chain to the electric carbolic batteries, which we bring along. So there's miniaturized version of them in one of these boats. And we can electrocute the creature, thus bringing it back. It's like a... Possibly or, cooking it at the same time. <laughs> it's like a Victor... And, and which would be pre-cooking it for Jean-Claude, who can then serve. So what you're asking is, is a steampunk taser. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, but I think, I, I think we I could do, do that. Know, so. that's, a, that's a crude way of putting it, you know, the electrocarbolic sphere, you know. Uh, okay. Fear, but, you know. Listen, what about... I'm, I'm not... How about we, we do... How about we take that idea, that's a great concept, we build it on the boat, so it's like a harpoon gun right. with the wire attached to the harpoon and then keep the batteries on the boat and then shoot it from the boat. And hopefully right, exactly. that would... That would I mean, we can't, we can't Mr. Burke do it, the, the trees will take off and just trail them along with it. Yeah. This way, we'll have the boat attached to it so we can... Well, well hope, the hopefully... <laughs> Hopefully, the the electric shock will bring it to to, to us, where where upon yeah, where upon we can we can tie it up so that and, you know, it might be worth also after you finish with the uh, main spear gun, also working on the small arms uh, as well. Yes, you know, as course. as time and components allows, of course. Well, yes, we have to retrofit these these boats as well. So maybe. Uh, Maybe I should stay with us here and do that because I don't think I'm really in, in shape for a trip to Berlin either. Mm -hmm. At that, there is another timid knock at the door. <laughs> <laughs> Enter! And there are Proctor and Gamble. Proctor, as I, I previously mentioned, has a massive black eye, right? It's still swollen. You can't even really see out of it. And it says, uh, forgive me, Professor, but... Uh, I think you might want to see this. And he's pointing out onto the, the deck. What is it now, old boy? Let's have a look. Stumble uh, you know, Proctor is holding the door for everyone so that he can stay inside the cabin. Mm. <laughs> excellent, excellent. I'm going to go right file right past that. With yeah, us. yeah. Yeah, we're going straight through. What, what is it? What, what is it now? Out, out on the deck, you have to move up toward the prow, so you're looking deeper into the rainforest, and you can just see you know, the slope of the, the terrain rising up into more mountainous, but still heavily greened uh, uh, terrain. The sun <laughs> is setting, right? So the, the sky is, is a, a crimson color, and ahead of you, it, it's sinking already down into a dark, dark, dark blue. Uh, and the, the pinpricks of stars uh, should be apparent. But out there, distantly, just on the horizon, there is a pulse of flashing green light, mm. which then flares and is gone. And that concludes tonight's session of The Sky <laughs> is No Limit. Hey! Yes! <laughs> Fantastic. Fantastic. I'm lining up two trees so I know where that place is. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Nice. So if this that were a serial, right, if, if you were going every Saturday and paying your, your five cents uh, in order to see the, the celluloid reel, what do you think would happen next? Uh, well, uh, so, so, so it'd be like the introduction to the next episode. Uh, with probably George Mallory, uh, you know, fighting off uh, one of these big birds by hand with, 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 uh, <laughs> with, with a spear. With yes, a with spear. Yeah. Right? Uh, then an, another cut scene to uh, Lawrence uh, pushing the, the big game hunter out of the way, grabbing hold of the spear gun and firing the harpoon. Weapon all wrapped created. up like a mummy. Yeah, I, I have. Yeah, yeah, I have visions of like long boats, right? With like I don't know, ten, twenty people per per boat. Just yeah, yeah. All sorts of electrocarbolic glowing yeah. engines and stuff, just hovering inches above the water, right? Making 
ridiculous speed, like speedboats almost, but floating above the water right as they make their way up the Amazon. Right, Completely with, a, with a rudder that's still digging into the water. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Completely exposed carbolic yeah. acid jars, you know. Yeah. <laughs> right, completely exposed crew inside the boat. Inside right. the boat, yeah. <laughs> Fantastic, I love it. All right. Everyone gets one point for showing up. Yay! Yay. That brings me to 15, yay! Yay! That, bring, uh, that brings me to one. <laughs> <laughs> and um, you guys are going to have to help me make up my mind. Was there any peril? <laughs> I'm, I know it was kind of an ambivalent. It says it was kind of. I was kind of vague, uh, not really willing to commit to the danger. So uh, I thought uh, I was in danger until Oscar was like climbing, you know, upside down with like two athletes, you know, two athletics. I'm thinking he's dying. Who might not? Who might not? I'm gonna fall. Just to be to be clear, had you fallen, that was death. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I wasn't really thinking about that. <laughs> <laughs> it's perhaps better not to. So, oh look down. Yeah. Yeah, I'm thinking to myself, I'm gonna die by like literally by the boat, like you know, just jostling a little bit, and like a jar hit falling on my head. Yeah, at that point, <laughs> so I've got about that much health left. Yeah, yeah danger. We had danger. Which of, which of the automatons died? I forgot. Delta. 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 Okay, we're gonna fix them. Delta. We can we can we can rebuild it. Surely. That's what I'm yeah, work the on technology. In my spare time. My spare, my, spare, yeah. my spare time is to work on his head and see if I can get that. <laughs> It'll be interesting to see if we ever find out what the rest of his sentence was. Yeah. I know. I liked you. <laughs> <laughs> what? You liked me what? More than the others? <laughs> than the others. Before you started talking. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps he, just, right. perhaps he just mispronounced licked. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> okay. <laughs> role play. There was some fine role play today. I enjoyed uh, the characters. They stuck to their guns. They, they did what they're good at. Uh, and uh, so we'll give out the role play point today. And... Didn't exactly accomplish a goal. Learn anything. <laughs> Uh, did we no, learn anything? Accomplishing a goal, I can't say that we, we really did that. But we, we have we have set a new course, we have a new plan, and yes. uh, if we can bring that into fruition in the next session, that will certainly be uh, like a success point waiting uh, next time. But uh, but this one was pretty much a uh, an evening of reversals and, and whatnot, <laughs> which opens us up for learning. Uh, is there anything in here? that is going to serve as a takeaway uh, for you as a player? Is there anything that's going to serve as a takeaway for the character as a character? Well, I at least can't think of two important details that uh, serve to learn something, which is one, we need better weapons, which uh, Burke uh, illustrated, but we, there was ample evidence of that. There's no vital point uh, to strike given the immense size of the creature. So I think that was a vital learning step. The second is the presence of the piercing. It's man-made, it's glowing. It may be some sort of device. Maybe they're controlling it using that. We, this is all speculation at this point, but um, it's not just a dinosaur, right? It's a, it's a, there's something else, either technological or magical behind it. So I don't know if that counts, but those two facts uh, I think we're most salient. What yeah. did you say, old boy? Magical? Magic. Oh. Magic's magic. It'll be some kind of technology. Oh. No, it's, yeah, some sort of primitive technology, you know, indistinguishable from magic. So, uh, <laughs> well, I have none of that supernatural nonsense here. Oh, here, here, old boy. <laughs> <laughs> Wake up, Mallory. We're <laughs> spending too Anything much time. Hey, what? Anything else? Are there oh. any other grand revelations? I think we either on finally, the side or the. I think we finally discovered that Smythe has died. No, no. <laughs> I don't think he's coming back this time. Oh, you no escape from the princess this time. I learned uh. as a player that always, always stick to to what the character does, who the character is. 
It doesn't matter how much peril you're in. <laughs> so you're a thrill seeker, by gum be a thrill seeker to the very end. Except, you know, although, at the same time, use your head, because if you can throw something, <laughs> instead, of, instead of walking through the arcing, arcing, you know, you know, that's still thrill seeking. But. Yeah, that was a huge risk, you know, with, that that, with all the balloon risk. penalties. Oh, if, it's huge. Uh, Right, so that would that would add another turn to. There was an interesting point where you had you had that decision to make, whether to to take uh, to to get rid of the wounds or to save the ship. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Good, yeah. That was that was a good point. And yeah. what is what is uh, what does Garibaldi learn? I think I think the most important thing that he learns, you know, mostly mostly off camera, so to speak, is that these. The creatures are real. Just like we're really in the right place. And these guys bungled it entirely because they, they had him attached to a crane by a cable. We had him. We had the creature. And it's important for me to be there for these, for, in these moments to make sure that we actually keep focus on what's really important. Obtaining a specimen. Obtaining a specimen. And or enough, enough at of, least uh, evidence. Evidence of a specimen. And enough of this, you know, we've got to save everybody, frivolity, and Let's stay safe, all this sort of stuff. That's Remember what we're stuff. here for. Remember what we're here for, gentlemen. Yeah, I, 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 no I We're gonna be, we're just, we're, we're gonna be ridiculed just as much as, as. Uh, oh all man, right. I forget the poor guy's name. Oh, but, uh, um, challenger, <laughs> Professor Challenger, Professor Challenger. Oh yeah, yeah. Challenger. Challenger. Definitely. I thought you were gonna say. So much a challenger. I thought you were gonna talk about crescendo. <laughs> Capuano. All right. <laughs> so I, I think that's what that is. That uh, four XP. That's that's a a learning point in learning point indeed. So yes, showing up, danger, role play, learning. All right. Excellent. Brings me up to seventeen. So the plans for that spear. Is it going to be hand thrown or is it going to be like a. I think it needs to be like a harpoon gun. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, no, I'm just looking at the picture behind Anthony. So it's like, eh, it looks pretty cool. But I don't have those skills. So <laughs> that might be something worth investing in. Yeah. Uh, that picture depicts somebody's last moments, maybe. <laughs> true. true. Well, That's it's, it's an interesting. Right, it's got the, the, the lash has a hook on the end, so it's kind of like, come here. But the spear is definitely saying, go, go away. Go away. <laughs> <laughs> Some ambivalence being demonstrated there. <laughs> now, if you're going to be an adventurer, you have to be of you know, single minded uh, focus. And I think Obtain that guy, a specimen. <laughs> he's in trouble. All right. All right. Then. Um, is there any likelihood that you would be going into Belém to, or not? Well, it's I, not necessary. You don't have to go, but if you don't go, then the soldiers desert their posts. I would probably be happiest working on my gadgets on the ship, and that's probably my place. And I could look after Lawrence's wounds, maybe. You can help out as well. Maybe help yeah, you can help out. Sorry, can you... yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd like to go because the, the, the troops did help a lot and uh, the record has to be set straight and I want Burke with us. And if we can take those soldiers with us, that would be even better, but maybe we can get them as a detachment to help with the expedition, <clears throat> right? Maybe I can uh, send George with a, um, a shopping list with that's, some that's true yeah. so, so, some some right. stuff that more we can, supplies yeah some stuff that we can maybe make use of for the various yeah. upgrades that we need because i think we could convince the consulate or the embassy here that we need that detachment of soldiers because if this creature returns it's a it's a serious danger to to the to the to belem itself so if we can uh, you know, at least investigate with some soldiers, we could, you know, help the settlement safe, right? So, you know, at least that's my, that's going to be my, uh, my tack when talking to them and trying to convince them to send us nice. the along with us. All right, so we'll have some political hijinks, we'll have some weird science invention, 
and we will have the beginning of your, let's say, ground-based or water-based or aerial water-based, however it turns out, uh, penetration of the rainforest to seek out that, the portal uh, to the lost plateau. So that nice. where we where we saw that um, that pulsing light disappear. How many is it easy for us to kind of gauge how far away that was? Or is that it's going to be a few uh, days trekking through the forest? Or? Yeah, it's it's going to be distant, and with with maps and some time, those of us with survival, uh, which handles navigation, should be able to have a you know like using a sextant or whatever to be able to figure out the distances involved. So, but we can get into that next time cool. when we yes. return for the next episode of The, the Sky, sky is, is No Limits. We have to work on that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, absolutely. My personal favorite moment, though, was when um, I forget who was coming up with the idea of the harpoon. Was that, was that Oscar? Yeah. And then I had drawn it. Yeah, yes. like, this, is, this is awesome because that's what, I was, that's what I was thinking to myself. That's the weapon we need. <laughs> Nice. And of science. Excellent. Okay. Thanks, everyone.